I can go on about the history of perspective drawing and how architect Filippo Brunelleschi rediscovered the ancient art of the Greek and the Roman linear perspective in the 15th century. But what is important to us as artists is why is it important to use perspective in our art? Simply put, perspective drawing is a crucial technique for any artist who wants to create realistic three-dimensional artwork. It allows us to create the illusion of depth and distance on a two-dimensional surface like the canvas or the paper and help the viewer to understand the relative scale, position and orientation of the object in the artwork. The importance of perspective drawing cannot be overstated. Without it, our art may appear flat and unrealistic. And it can be difficult for the viewer to understand the spatial relationship between objects. Even if our artwork is imaginative or fantastical, it's important to follow the principles of perspective to create a sense of realism and believability. In addition to its realism, perspective drawing is also important for creating dynamic and engaging composition. By using techniques like foreshortening and forced perspective, we can create the visual interest and tension in our art. Also, we can draw the viewer's eye towards certain areas and create a sense of movement and depth in our painting. But perspective drawing isn't just useful for representational art. It can also be used to create abstract and stylized position allowing us to manipulate the viewer's perception of space and create unique and expressive artwork. In short, perspective drawing is a crucial technique for any artist who want to create realistic, engaging, and believable art. Whether you are working on a realistic or abstract art, mastering perspective is an essential skill that will serve you well in your art journey. Many beginner artists struggle with the concept of perspective drawing, especially if they started drawing at a young age and are used to working in a two-dimensional world. It can be challenging to switch from a 2D mentality to understanding a 3D environment, and this can make it difficult to create realistic and believable artwork. One of the main challenges of learning perspective drawing is overcoming the tendency to draw what we think we see rather than what we actually see in front of us. Without a basic understanding of perspective drawing, it can be hard to depict objects in a foreshortened perspective as our brains may convince us that they shouldn't look that way. However, with practice and a better understanding, we can learn to see and draw what is actually in front of us rather than relying on our preconceived notions. Perspective drawing can be intimidating at first, but once you learn the few basic rules like measurements and tools, things will start to make sense and become much easier. It's important to start with an easy introduction to perspective before moving on to more complicated subjects. And it's also important to always practice to build up your 3D muscles and understanding. By learning the important terms used in perspective drawing and applying them to our artwork, we can create more realistic and engaging compositions. So it's important to understand and master perspective drawing to improve our skills as artists. When I first started drawing, the first book I bought was Drawing from the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards, as I've said many times. And the hardest part to follow was draw what you see, not what you think you are seeing. Part of the difficulty was trying to prevent my mind from doing what is logical, instead of what is in front of me. Without any basic knowledge of perspective, it won't make any sense to draw a hand bigger than the head in a foreshortened perspective, even though it might look bigger in that view. Your brain will convince you that it shouldn't be. Now, you can battle that feeling by drawing daily and moving a bit closer to reality every day, but you can shortcut your way to that goal by learning how to draw in perspective. Perspective drawing will make you understand why things look the way they look, instead of forcing yourself to shut down your logical brain. With perspective drawing, you will use your logical brain to actually understand and allow the right artistic brain to take over. Another reason why perspective drawing can be difficult for beginners is that it requires a certain level of spatial awareness and attention to detail. It's important to accurately depict the relative scale, position, and orientation of objects in a composition. And this can be tricky for artists who are just starting out and may not have developed these skills just yet. Finally, perspective drawing often involves a set of specific rules and techniques that can be confusing for beginners. Understanding concepts like one, two, and three point perspectives, foreshortening, and forced perspective can be challenging, and it takes time and practice to master this technique. Overall, perspective drawing can be a difficult skill to learn for beginner artists, but with practice and better understanding for the principles and techniques involved, it becomes much easier with time. So perspective might look and feel difficult at the beginning, but once you learn few rules, take some measurements and learn some tools, things will start to make sense and will get much easier as you move forward. That's why in this series I'm starting with an easy introduction first before moving on to more complicated subjects in perspective.
Once you manage to learn the basics, you can build on that and expand your knowledge of perspective and start drawing more and more complicated shapes and forms. And as always, it takes practice to build that new 3D muscles in your brain. It's not gonna happen in one day or one month. It's a constant, everyday practice and understanding. With that said, let's start actually learning about the perspective, starting with the important terms used in perspective drawing. When it comes to drawing in perspective, there are several key terms to be aware of. These terms will help us understand and accurately depict the three-dimensional world on two-dimensional surface. First, let's consider the ground plane. This is the surface upon which we stand and view the landscape. In front of us is the picture plane, which represents the view that we see. However, our eyes do not take the entire picture plane at once. Rather, we see a cone-shaped region in the center of our vision, with everything outside this cone appearing blurry. And the central region is known as the center of vision, and it's where we are mostly focused. If we draw a horizontal line through the center of the vision, we get the horizon line. This line represents the eye level, or the height at which our eyes are positioned. The distance from where we stand, the stationary point, to the center of the vision is called the distance line, and the plane that it lies on is known as the plane of the horizon. We can also draw a vertical line through the center of vision, which is known as the height line. This line allows us to measure the height of objects and to move them up or down on the plane of the horizon. Finally, the line between the picture plane and the ground plane is the ground line, a projection of the horizon line into the ground, showing where the ground plane intersects with the horizon. These are just few terms used in perspective drawing, but they provide a good foundation for understanding how three-dimensional objects and spaces are depicted in two dimensions. As we continue to study perspective, we will encounter and utilize these terms in more depth. To make perspective drawing easier, try looking at it from a perspective of the viewer, rather than looking at the viewer from above. In this view, you will typically see the following elements. The eye level or the horizon line, the VP or the vanishing point, the object, and the perspective lines connecting the object to the horizon line and the vanishing point. This is the basic structure of any object in perspective. It's worth noting that the vanishing points can vary in number. We usually stick to one, two, or three vanishing points, and anything more can cause excessive distortion that is difficult for the human eye to perceive. However, this type of distortion can be seen in some lenses, like the fish eye lens, but it's not as used in architecture or drawing, due to the higher distortion rate in the four-point perspective and above. Now with this brief introduction to the basic terms of perspective, we can conclude this lesson. In the future, I will aim to make these lessons shorter and more easily digestible, while also providing more examples for each lesson. I find it easier for students to absorb information in shorter lessons, rather than the longer ones, like the an hour or an hour and a half lesson. It's also beneficial to practice after each lesson, rather than trying to complete a whole course at once. Therefore, we will stop here and continue in the next lesson by discussing the different type of perspective along with examples of course on each one. And this is it for this lesson, if you enjoy it, please consider leaving a like. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I will do my best to answer them as soon as possible. To stay updated on future lessons, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next lesson.